What's up everyone, Jimmy from MTB Travel Review here and today we're gonna do a deep dive into athlete sponsorships. Now, if you're new to the channel, you may or may not know that I work with a lot of sponsors. I prefer to call them partners because at the end of the day, it should be a partnership. But during the day, I am also a sales director for an organic energy bar company called Kate's Real Food, and we have our own ambassador program. So I have a unique view from both sides of the table, from the manufacturer who is looking to sponsor someone or bring on an influencer, and then from the personal side of someone who needs these partners and sponsors to be successful in my space. Now, since I have the view from both sides of the table, I'm going to give you all the ins and outs of a sponsorship, what to look for, how to get sponsored, the do's and don'ts, and what to be cautious of when you're looking for a sponsor or even looking at someone sharing a sponsored product. So welcome to the channel. Thank you for following along. Feel free to like and subscribe to the channel if you are a fan. Let's jump right into it. Now when it comes to sponsorships first, let's talk about the lingo. Some people just call us sponsored athletes. Some people are called brand ambassadors. Some call people influencers. Now there are different nuances to each title, but at the end of the day, they're pretty interchangeable and you'll hear all of them across the board depending on what a company's trying to do and how they want to portray things. Now why do companies want to sponsor athletes or have athletes represent them? To understand that, you need to know a little bit about brand marketing. Now, if you're starting a company, the most important things you're going to need are, first of all, an amazing product that you know is going to do well. You then need amazing marketing, which will ultimately lead to amazing sales and an amazing sales team. Now, one of the biggest components of those three is marketing. You need to get your product in the eyes of consumers. You need to share a certain message, sell your product to them, and marketing is how you're going to do that. In today's world, there are a ton of brands out there. As you know, across all of your social media platforms, commercials, billboards, everywhere, they're selling something. So how are you going to stand out amongst the field of so many competitors? One of the best ways to get your brand out there and build consumer trust is what's called guerrilla marketing. Now, guerrilla marketing may sound pretty intense, but it's ultimately just organic marketing. It's getting your product into someone's hands, in their face, organically. That can be standing at a table at a festival and trying to show off your product. It can be walking down the streets and handing your product to people, or it can be sponsoring an athlete or bringing on a brand ambassador or influencer to create this ripple effect. This brand ambassador is going to take your product, share it across their platforms in multiple different ways. That's going to get shared across the whole digital universe, or it's going to be shared at events that they're participating in, or it's going to be shared among the clients that they work with. It's all going to create this organic ripple effect of everybody sharing with their friends and ultimately giving you one of the cheapest forms of marketing because all of these people are doing the work for you at the end of the day. Now, depending on which level of brand ambassador you're looking at, this can be one of the cheapest forms of marketing out there. There are basically three different tiers of brand ambassador. First and foremost, there's what we'll call the big leagues. So this is going to be, you know, the best athlete in their sport with a ton of followers. It's great, they have a big following, a lot of people look up to them, but they can be some of the most expensive athletes. Normally, you have to give them all free product along with some monetary cash. Now, the next tier of brand ambassador is going to be the mid-level ambassador, someone like myself. I'm a decent racer on the amateur level. I have a strong social media following. I have an influence. I make videos, I share things, people watch them. So there is a great potential of people watching my stuff, seeing a product and organically at least glancing at that product if not trying it out. Of the three buckets, I'm probably the most effective. Normally, if you're looking at a product, even if some huge sponsored athlete has it, sure, you might lean towards it, but if your buddy has it and he's telling you about it and he's someone that you trust, this organic ripple effect of marketing is going to happen a lot faster. And last but not least, the influencer bucket is kind of the last tier of guerrilla marketing when it comes to sponsored athletes. Influencers are usually just a one-off. You pay somebody to post something one time or you give them product to post something or share something one time. Normally, 
it's not that effective because you don't consistently see someone using that product. But a lot of people will take that avenue to make a quick buck or get some free products. It's kind of a dark side of the business in my opinion, but can still be effective if it's done correctly. Now let's get down to the good stuff. How do you get sponsored? To understand the most effective way for someone to get sponsored, you should understand that any person looking for sponsors is also looking for what's called an ROI. That is a return on their investment. Now, if a brand is willing to bring on a sponsored athlete, they are going to need in, to ensure their organization that whatever money they shell into these sponsorships is going to actually draw people to their business and create sales for them. If they're not creating sales, if they're not seeing a return on their investment, then what's the point at the end of the day? Sure, some companies could just sponsor athletes because they have a bunch of money and they want to support, which is awesome. But most of the time, a brand needs a return on investment in order to keep the program going. Now, knowing that a company needs a return on their investment, you need to think about what you bring to the table for that company. Now, most sponsorships in the old days used to just be, you would have to be a great athlete or someone with a ton of natural exposure. But since we're in the digital age and there's the TikToks and Instagrams and so many ways to create a voice for yourself, you can actually have just as much power with a big social following as some of the best athletes out there. So this is what you need to decide. Either you need to be a fantastic athlete or be at the top of your field or whatever it is, just be the best at it. Or you need to have a big digital following, which is going to be Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever it is, you need to have a lot of people not only subscribed or liking your stuff, but a lot of engagement. You need comments, you need people sharing stuff. You need to be really, really intertwined in whatever community you're involved with. Now, when you're looking for a sponsor, one thing to keep in mind is that all sponsors are going to structure their program differently. There's not one set Bible for sponsorships. A company can really tweak and mold this program however they want to, and a lot of companies are trying new things to create the most effective programs they can and get the biggest return on their investment. Now I work with multiple sponsors. Some of my sponsors supply me with free products. Some of them supply me with discounts. Some of them just let me test new innovative products so I can constantly have my hands on something new. There's all different levels, but don't go into any sponsorship with a certain expectation. You're not always going to get free stuff. You're not always going to get this or that. You're going to want to look at their programs, figure out what they're offering, and figure out whether you guys can work together or not. If you're going to start looking for sponsors, first, I would figure out what sponsor make sense in the space that you are in. Now for me, I'm very particular about my sponsors. I don't want to be sponsored by someone or to represent a product that I don't truly believe in. So I'm very picky with my partners and who I want to work with. If it's not a product that I use daily or that I truly believe in, I don't want to represent it. Which brings me to one of the things you need to be cautious of. If you're looking at my content or any ambassador's content, do a little diligence and figure out whether they're kind of a hollow ambassador or someone who actually cares. A lot of ambassadors just want free stuff. They just want a few extra bucks. There are a lot of companies as well that will just shoot me emails all the time and say, hey, check out my products, do a review. You're gonna love my stuff. That's not for me. I'm willing to try everything. I will tell anyone that reaches out to me that I will try your product and let you know what I think. But again, I am very particular. So you should be particular with not only who you're looking to be sponsored by, but also who you trust when you're trying new products or being influenced. Now, once you find some products or companies that make sense, I would first go to their website, check out what their protocol is. Do they have a special sponsor page? If not, reach out to them, find an email, find some contact information, shoot them a very nice email. Now, if you're going to reach out to a company, one thing you should do, just like applying for a job, is create a resume. A resume can be key when you're looking for a sponsor. That way, you can literally send them an email and say, hey, I'm interested in partnering with you. I love your products. Here's my resume and what I bring to the table, whether it's your race results or your digital following, whatever it is, put that on a resume, show them that you're not messing around, that you consider this a true partnership and you're willing to work hard for it. Now, if you manage to find some great sponsors and you create a partnership that works for both of you, just understand that it is a give and take. It is a partnership. You need to supply value to them and in return, they're going to hook you up with something that helps you along your way. 
For me, my sponsors are great because a lot of what I do costs a lot of money. There's a lot of travel, there's cameras, there's food. I'm always out there, I'm always moving, and it gets very expensive very fast. So since I can work with these partners, they make it a little easier for me to work in the space with providing discounts or some free goods. These things make a big difference, and I wouldn't be able to do what I do without my sponsors there to help me along the way. Now in return, I'm very diligent with my sponsors. If there's something specific they're looking for, I always return the favor. I always try to create the best organic content that I can and include my sponsors in everything that I can to make sure that they're getting a bunch of exposure and ultimately I'm helping their company grow. Again, a partnership. Now there's a few extra little things to think about in today's market, especially when it comes to social media. There's so many people out there that you see in the post and they're just Look at this product, it's amazing, you're gonna love it. It looks fake, nobody's gonna believe you. Now, you'll notice again with my sponsors that I use all of these products daily. So it can be as simple as having a product in the background that you're not really looking at, but it's always there. It can be the fact that in every one of my riding videos, I wear my G-Form pads because they're one of my partners. It could just be a perfectly placed product. While I'm talking to you, maybe I'm snacking on my favorite waffle, which is also one of my partners. That said, get creative. Think outside of the box. Don't make it so forced. Don't just put a silly post with you holding a product like this. That's not really doing it. Also, if people reach out and they ask you about your sponsors, be honest with them. I'm not gonna tell you that every single one of G-Form's pad is the best. I'm not gonna tell you that Noble Wheels are completely invincible. I'm going to give you an honest review and my opinion, my goal is only to show you what I'm using, tell you why, and then it's up to you. If you wanna use the product, great. If it works for you, awesome. If it's something you like, that's perfect. But I'm not saying you have to use it. I'm not saying it's the best product out there by far. I'm saying, this is my opinion, this is my experience with the product, I truly enjoy it, feel free to try it if you want to. Maybe I have a discount code, who knows? At the end of the day, there's a ton of products, there's a ton of great companies out there that are trying to make an impact, and there are a lot of great athletes and ambassadors that are just trying to do the right thing and share awesome products. So, do your research, have fun with it. If you're looking for sponsors, make sure you do it the right way and have some integrity. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you're a fan of the channel and this video, make sure you like, smash that subscribe button to support and follow along for more. If you have any suggestions, anything you can add to the video, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching guys. See ya.